And now I'd like to welcome to the stage Kelly Jensen to talk about Steed Bonnet, the crummiest pirate ever. Hello, friends. Okay. Um, so, hands up, please. Who has heard of Steed Bonnet? Awesome. I'm actually not being cliched about this like I need to see hands. So um, keep them up if you knew that he was an actual person. Excellent. How many of you knew that he was an actual person before the TV show Our Flag Means Death came out? And of those of you who still have your hands up, how many of you heard about him from me like nine years ago the first time I gave this talk? Okay, so if you still have your hands up, uh, and we're not friends yet, um, you need to come and talk to me afterward because we need to be friends because that's, yes. Um, so if you've seen Our Flag Means Death and you're emotionally attached to Steed Bonnet, you are going to hate this talk. <laughs> um, I'm not going to give away any spoilers for the show, but I'm going to warn you up front that the real story does not end well. Um, so, this Steed Bonnet, this is not an actual photograph. Uh, this is from the show, just for reference. Um, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick, uh, a quick little frame of where we are in time here. So our story is going to take place in the middle of the colonial era of America. Uh, like the Salem Witch Trials were 25 years ago, but we still got about 60 years to go before the American Revolution. So that's where we are. Okay, so this dude... Steed Bonnet was born in 1688, and he grew up in the English colony of Barbados. He was from a rich family, and he was orphaned at age six. So he was brought up as like a pampered little kid, and the people who brought him up were servants and enslaved people. And I'm sorry to tell you this, but he was an enslaver. Um, we all wish that wasn't true, but 18th century morals continue to disappoint. Uh, so eventually he marries a nice girl and he has a couple of kids and then in the spring of 1717 at the age of 28 or 29 everything goes wrong somehow and he decides to run away and become a pirate because that makes sense um, so he has a ship built ships um, he doesn't steal a ship he doesn't capture a ship which is what you do if you're a pirate no he goes and has like a nice ship custom built it's very pleasant um he does name her the revenge which is very piratey um and then he goes and hires a crew for wages and if you're a pirate you you pay your crew and a share of the plunder uh but no he pays them wages like they work at the dmv <laughs> and he has custom bookshelves installed on the revenge because nothing says pirate like a well-appointed library and he has never been on a ship before, except as a passenger. So he's depending on his crew to know everything. And he sails off in the middle of the night. He leaves his wife and kids, and he never sees them again. Why would he do this? Was he in debt? Was he insane? His friends thought he was probably insane. Uh, it was said that this humor of going a-pirating proceeded from a disorder in his mind, which is said to have been occasioned by some discomforts he found in a married state. So presumably that marriage wasn't going too well. Uh, or maybe he just wanted to hang out with hot sailors and who would blame him? <laughs> so Steve Bonnet sails off and he learns how to be a pirate. This is a sophisticated artist's rendering, obviously. Um, and he's got this pirate flag and everything and it's got this cute little heart and this tiny little dagger and it's like a Hello Kitty version of a pirate flag. <laughs> so cute. Um, and he heads for South Carolina because he thinks he won't be recognized there and he makes the crew call him Captain Edwards so he won't get into trouble. And the captain of the first ship he captures is somebody he knows from Barbados. <laughs> Literally on his first day as a pirate he gets busted. So, so sad. So uh, Bonnet and his crew just like burn the guy's ship and run away. And it's dawning on his crew that Bonnet is an idiot and shouldn't be in charge of anything. Um, and they decide to head for the island of Nassau, which was known at the time as the Republic of Pirates. Pirates outnumbered ordinary citizens at this time by two to one. So it was like the cool place to be. So uh, they're on their way there and on their way, Steed Bonnet decides to engage a full on Spanish warship in battle. <laughs> Um, and he gets half the crew killed and he gets himself seriously injured, so he's real good at this. When, he re when the revenge limps, limps into Nassau, Bonnet meets up with these, very two, these two very nice men who offer to help him. There's Captain Benjamin Hornigold and his right-hand man, Edward Teach. 
Hornigold was the leader of the entire freaking Republic of Pirates, and Teach was Blackbeard. So Blackbeard was a freaking badass. He knew how to sail, he knew how to command, he used to uh, light burning fuses and stick them under his hat so that when he boarded ships, he'd be surrounded by smoke and fire, and it was freaking terrifying. And he had actually only been a pirate for a year or two at this point, but he was much better at it than Steed Bonnet. He had a way better flag, too. Like, this is how you do a pirate flag. Like, I stab your heart with my giant devil spear. Um, but Bonnet and Blackbeard strike up this unlikely friendship. <laughs> Blackbeard offered to command Bonnet's ship while he recovered from his injuries, and this is where the frenemy part of our story begins. So they sail off together, and they're plundering the Carolinas and Philadelphia, and it's going really well. They were like quite successful in super piratey, or Black, Blackbeard was super piratey. He was terrifying. Bonnet was described by one of the people they captured as walking around the deck in his dressing gown, enjoying one of the books from his library. <laughs> so um, Bonnet recovered from his injuries, and he took over the revenge again after Cap Blackbeard captured a flagship of his own. And they're cruising around together, capturing ships and amassing a pirate fleet. But have you ever had that job where, like, the boss doesn't know anything, but they're somehow still in charge? So that, that's, that's Steve Bonnet. Um, and his crew got really sick of it, and they complained to Blackbeard. So Blackbeard invited Bonnet over to his own ship to just have a chat about his leadership skills. Uh, whereupon he promptly steals Bonnet's ship, uh, gives the revenge to a different captain, and imprisons Bonnet as an unwilling guest. So Bonnet is now moping around the ship, telling anyone that will listen that he doesn't want to be a pirate anymore, and he just wants to go home, except that he's embarrassed now, and he just wants to move to Portugal. Mm -hmm. And Blackbeard is, you know, unsurprisingly sick of this. And he convinces Bonnet to go and take the Act of Grace, which was a deal where the King of England would pardon you for being a pirate, and you'd be cleared of all charges as long as you said that you were going to go straight and you were going to give up piracy. Great, fine, wonderful. Bonnet thinks this is a great idea. So he goes off with his ship. Or, no, sorry, he goes off. Uh, he leaves his ship and some of his crew that are still loyal to him. He leaves them with Blackbeard, and he goes off to North Carolina to go and get pardoned. And he's planning on becoming a privateer, which is exactly like piracy, except that you only capture enemy ships in wartime, and therefore it's somehow legal. Uh, so... When he gets back to his ship, Blackbeard has stolen all of the food and all of the supplies and all of the treasure, uh, and he's marooned the faithful crew members on a desert island and sailed away, presumably laughing his ass off. So now he has promised to give up piracy, but Blackbeard has run away with all of his groceries. So he's still capturing ships, and he's taking their cargo, but he's giving them stuff in return, like, Arr, ye scurvy dog, I'll trade ye a barrel of pork for these fine ladies' combs. And he changes the name of his ship to the Royal James and makes his crew call him Captain Thomas because he totally won't get recognized if people are calling him and his ship by different names. And his crew obviously thinks this is dumb. Uh, so they put somebody else in charge of the ship again, and they start throwing rum-soaked parties on the decks of the ships that they've captured, and they're having a great time, and boy, it's sad again. So at some point... The the Revenge, or the Royal James, or whatever she's called now, starts leaking, and they have to go and haul her out on the sandbars in the mouth of the Cape Fear River in South Carolina to fix her up. And at some point, the governor of South Carolina uh, hears that they're there, and he sends pirate hunter William Rhett after them, who I can only assume looks like this. <laughs> so Rhett comes out to find them. And the ships start to engage in battle, but then the tide goes out, and all of the ships just run aground. <laughs> so they're stranded within pistol shot of each other. So the battle keeps going on, but it is completely ineffective. And Steed Bonnet's on the deck yelling his most terrifying threats at them, including, we will speak with you by and by. Uh, and this goes on for a full six hours. <laughs> Eventually, the tide comes back in, and Rhett's ships get unstuck uh, before Bonnet's does, and so Bonnet and his crew all get captured. So, everybody gets locked up in Charleston, but since there's no jail, and because Steed Bonnet is such a gentleman, the provost marshal puts him up at his house. But because it's just somebody's dumb house, like, obviously, Bonnet escapes, obviously, and then immediately gets recaptured. 
because he has no luck whatsoever. And at the trial, Bonnet's claiming that he didn't really want to be a pirate, and his crew made him do it, and the judge just does not buy it, and condemns him and his crew to death. But Bonnet is so pathetic, and he's so obviously bad at being a pirate, and possibly not right in his head, that everyone in Charleston, like particularly the ladies, feel really bad for him, and they're writing to the governor, and they're trying to get him clemency, and they're trying to get his, commu uh, his sentence commuted, and Bonnet writes this very, very sad letter to the governor begging for mercy, and, and he promises he'll stop being a pirate, and, and he's like, but if you cut my le arms and legs off, I, you, know, you know I won't do it again, but just leave my tongue, but I can keep saying I'm sorry. It's the saddest letter. It's really very terrible. But it doesn't work. So finally, after his execution was delayed seven times, on December 10th, 1718, he mounted the gallows with a bouquet of flowers in his hand, and he was hanged. And even the hanging was botched. <laughs> the rope wasn't long enough to just break his neck, and so he just slowly strangled. So, this is, here's the kicker. All of this took place in a year and a half. <laughs> Bonnet decided to be a pirate at age 28 or 29, and he was dead by age 30. So I guess the good news is, if you're not cut out to be a pirate, you won't be one for long. <laughs> um, so this is a terrible ending to a terrible story. But we all have imaginations, right? So maybe we could picture a version of this story that didn't end so badly. Maybe there was a version where Blackbeard and Steed Bonnet got along better, and maybe they had a happier ending, which is a really low bar, like that seems really achievable. <laughs> Slightly happier ending. So, let us raise a glass to a bookish gentleman who was probably a really, really pleasant dinner companion, but should never, ever have been a pirate. <laughs> to Steed Bonnet.